Great. Okay. So, um, welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. As is our custom, I'm going to ask you to signify your presence vocally. Uh, Alex. Here. Laura. Here. Tammy. Here. Bob. Here. Lee. Here. And Austin is here. Okay. No changes or additions to the agenda that I know of. Uh, next item of business is the approval of the minutes of September 20th. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Again. Thank you so much. Okay. Corrections to the minutes. Okay, uh, voting to approve, yay or nay? Alex? Yes. Barr? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Bob? Yes. Lee? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, thank you for that. Next item is a public comment. Uh, looks like there are four attendees. Thank you all for coming. Anybody wish to make a public comment, if you would raise your virtual hand. Okay, I see no public comment. Item five, the president's report. Uh, I don't know how, how much I can say uh, thank you that would be adequate to uh, the Friends Development Committee for the John Lithgow event. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, I guess we should say a smash. Yeah. Um, what a wonderful event um, to have him come and take a tour of the library and actually see um, the facility and then come to that event um, and talk about our library project. Uh, it was just phenomenal. And of course, his uh, engaging speech was, again, just warm and warm and wonderful. Um, did, did you all have a chance to go? What do you think? He was fabulous. I loved when he did his Churchill voice <laughs> <laughs> and the manatee counting, you know, in his fingers. Yeah. Oh, when he rhymes, that was 12 really rhymes for manatee. Yeah. Well, it was just a wonderful event and another uh, moment to celebrate um, the library and its meaning for the town. And that's what I felt. I felt we were in a, a little bit of a love fest mm -hmm. and, um, uh, much deserved uh, credit to the friends for organizing that event and much deserved praise to the library director and the staff for all the love that is directed their way. Could I ask it's... one question? Did people actually write out those questions? Yeah. They did. Okay. I didn't know there was a place to put a question, but well, there was a, there was like a, a basket Oh, I didn't see it, but I thought maybe he made up those questions, but they were real questions. Great. It's fun. I can I attest a... I can attest to the fact that they were he was reading from the cards. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's my that's my report. Again, much much gratitude. Okay. Committee reports, library building committee. So there's I think uh, considerable good news on the library building committee front. Uh, the committee hasn't, uh, you know, we're not, we're not meeting as regularly as we um, met. We meet when we need to meet to approve things. We had a chance uh, to see the uh, flooring material that's going to be used in the library uh, in person um, in the um, in the in the Woodbury room, we had a chance to look at the brickwork 
uh, that's going to be on the outside of the building. Um, the committee was pretty clear in its choice about the brickwork. And um, uh, I think there was much good discussion, much helpful discussion about um, the floor, the flooring materials. Uh, the Feingold Alexander is just submitted to the MBLC. Uh, this is the 75% of their pr progress on their construction um, documents uh, that will be discussed with MBLC staff. Uh, we are in the midst, as I think I might have mentioned before, of going through various town committees. Uh, we've had, again, productive meetings with the Design Review Committee and with uh, the Historic Commission. We'll go back for more conversations with the Historical Commission and be talking to other town um, committees. Uh, other n important news, good news, um, we have obtained a plumbing variance, uh, which will allow us to go forward with our plans for the restrooms in the re um, in the renovated and expanded um, uh, library. We are waiting the results of the uh, various reports that are going to be forthcoming about sustainability um, in the library. Uh, we are on the cusp of. Uh, an RFP for uh, alternative sites, uh, which will require, again, that's going to be run through the town and will require uh, a lot of planning and logistical work, which the library director has already begun to um, to do. Uh, Alex, is there anything that uh, you'd like to add about the building committee? Uh, nope, just super happy that we got the variance and that the library is at the forefront of uh, gender neutral bathrooms. So, yay. Okay. Uh, any questions or observations about the building committee? Okay. Thank you. Next is uh, buildings and facilities. Alex. Uh, so we haven't met since our last meeting, uh, trustee meeting. There were two meetings. The notes from our last meeting are in this packet, but we discussed that during our last meeting. Um, our next scheduled meeting is on the 17th. And so we'll report at the next trustee meeting on that meeting. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Alex? Okay. Next, Tammy. Yes, um, you have in your packet um, draft of assurance evaluation, which the PPP has approved. And I make a motion that we approve um, the director's evaluation dated October 2023. Thank you. As I Is explained, there... it's a little later than usual, as I explained in a comment in the um, in the evaluation. So let's wait wait for a second, Tammy, and then you can. Oh, okay. Sorry. A second. That's okay. Go. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. Tammy, do you want to say anything else about no, the evaluation? No, um, I, I, I did make some comments in, in the report that due to the timing, um, which was delayed this, this year, I think we had fewer responses because they were in August and right. so many people are away in August. Um, but um, for those who submitted evaluations, as I said, um, Sharon got very high marks. And um, there were a few comments here, there, suggestions, and I will be discussing them with her at a meeting. And she gets copies of all of the evaluations um, that were submitted, which ultimately right. I think go in your personnel file. Is that correct? Okay, yeah. So are there any comments? Questions or comments Questions, about yeah. the director evaluation. So I have just a question, Tammy. It may, if it's in the report, uh, please for, for, forgive me, but I, I don't think I saw it. Uh, we have 17 total evaluations. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you tell us how that broke down? Um, how many from library users? How many from library staff? How many from... Okay. Is that possible? See. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Um, 
I think there were five public comments, seven staff comments, four uh, trustee comments, and uh, Paul Bachelman. Okay. Right. That's as I, as I remember it. Um, and I will, as I said, I will be passing copies of those to Sharon. Yeah. Farah. Um, Farah? Uh, I can't remember if I asked this at the last meeting, uh, Tammy, but have there been more responses in years past? Uh, yes, as I, well, I don't know from Chris. I'd have to go back to the, some of the, the, but as I said on this one, um, we had 17 this year and that's six less than last year. Okay. So, um, so that's the timing. For yeah, the last year I, I, I was able to get everything out in July and Tashi helped me with it in the library, but Tashi was on vacation. So John filled in. Um, they put out boxes and in the past, a lot of replies have ended up in the boxes this year, none did. Matt Bruby puts puts it online for both the staff, the, for the, sends it out to the staff, that form, and then sends the public one out. And I usually send it to the head of the friends. Um, of the public comments, I don't know if some of those were friends or publics, only one person identified herself. In the past, the staff usually identify if they're full or part-time and only of the, of the um, staff only less than half identified if they were full-time or part-time. So it's harder to judge some of the suggestions or comments. Mm -hmm. A lot of people put unable to judge on things, which is understandable. Um, but uh, I, I think if we can get it approved a little, it, we didn't meet in June, so that mm -hmm. was the, the snafu. We didn't approve it till July 25th, I think. And I was able to get it out um, due the 18th of August for some, but um, in the library, they really wanted it extended another week, which went into my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so so that there were a lot of, um, but uh, you know, it's still a very positive review from a wide group of um, respondents. Okay, other questions about the director's evaluation. So I'll just say, um, in particular to Tammy, uh, how grateful we are for this work. It is a, it is a tremendous amount of work yeah. um, that goes on for a very long period of time, getting the approval of the form, getting the forms distributed, and digesting the forms, producing a report, and meeting with the director. Uh, it's a huge, it is a huge amount of work, and we are incredibly grateful. Uh, to Tammy. Well, it's been interesting to take over from Chris. I had didn't work with him, and that was the little hard. But I, I did get in touch with him, and he gave me some good pointers. So. Well, again, thank you for that. Um, I do want to just add the following note, and uh, I add it. Um, uh, I think that the library director has done an extraordinary job for a very long time. But uh, the extraordinariness, if that's a verb, of the work that she does seems to me to kind of multiply year by year. And um, as we've gotten further into the building project, Sharon has had to take on an enormous um, set of responsibilities beyond the most important work that she does, which is day to day to make sure that the library provides the most excellent service um, to the patrons, but uh, she's done it unfailingly and with incredibly um, good spirit. Uh, that means being involved in fundraising, being involved in providing various reports, being involved in countless meetings with the OPM, the architects, uh, MBLC, and um, and others. I mean, it's it's as if she has a job over here and another job and she's doing them both and she's doing them um, 
I think, incredibly well. Anybody that's that's had the that's dealt with Sharon about anything having to do with the library knows that Sharon has incredibly high standards uh, for herself and her staff. And anybody who's had to deal with Sharon knows that uh, Sharon is um, an optimistic, positive, can-do person. And that optimism and can-do spirit, I think, serves the library and its users very well. So in my view, just as one person, an extraordinary um, year of dedicated service and of high quality performance. Here, here. Oh, okay. All right, are we ready to here. vote? Okay, so voting to approve or not approve the library director's annual evaluation summary is uh, dated October of 2023. Alex? Yes. Bob? Yes. Tammy? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Uh, Far, Yes. Lee? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Back to you, Tammy. Okay. Um, there are a couple things on the agenda that the, um, the JEDI committee are working on. Um, okay. The um, patron... You're muted, Tammy. Sorry. Um, the uh, JEDI committee is looking at um, a patron behavior policy and the staff has reviewed, reviewed it and it will come to PPP for our consideration at our next meeting, um, which is early next month, I believe. And similarly, um, the JEDI uh, committee is working on it, uh, looking at the action plan. And Farah, do you want to report on the survey that's gone um, out? I can't really. Well, we're, we're our next meeting is is next week. So we have not met since our last trustee meeting, but we do okay. have a lot of responses coming in for the survey. They're extremely favorable. So I'm hmm. just trying to figure out like I'm I think we have to do a little more outreach and Mia was going to get in touch um, with the with the school uh, to get it out on the school, the superintendent's uh, weekly blast um, instead of the individual PGO. So she's going to do that. And um, I guess we'll discuss some of the results at our meeting next week. So I hope to have a little more information next month. Okay. Any questions on that? Or I think it might be useful just to remind us and uh, any of the people who are uh, attending the meeting, could you just remind us the membership of the Jedi Committee? Just who meeting? the folks, just who the folks are, just name the folks. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, from the library, there's Mia Cabana. Um, there's from, from the community there's Raphael Rogers who's from Clark and does DEI work there Melissa Giroux who who runs Embrace Race with her partner uh, Andrew Grant Thomas um, Ginny Hamilton who's on the capital campaign but she's there as a community member Walter um, Sharon I'm blanking on his last name Lloyd Lloyd, right. He's a high school student, and mm -hmm. I'm hoping he'll still be there next next year. He is a freshman in college now. So, oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> I totally forgot that. So I'm I'm thinking he'll still stay on, right? So that's one, two, three, four, and, uh, and that's it. And me and Sharon. Well, Sharon's at all our meetings. <laughs> and in case anyone didn't... Uh, uh, just to give some background, the survey is we were trying to kind of craft together a sense of or trying to find out from the community how they if they have feel that they belong in the library. So it was mm -hmm. a very short, um, just like four. I mean, we spent months trying to craft the perfect four questions and we're not 100 percent sure if they're the most perfect. 
but it was just to get a sense of if people feel like they belong in the library and whether they feel like the collections reflect their interests or their who they are. Um, I don't think we had any questions about race or ethnicity, right, Sharon? We we were gonna save that for the. We just wanted to see what this first survey, what the results were. So this was sort of a starting point to to do more outreach in the community. Right. Does that? Yeah. Sharon, could you remind us? Uh, how many different languages are represented in our collection? Oh, gosh. Uh, between 8 and 10, 12, 12, maybe. I think it's more. I thought it was more than that. But it, uh, uh, so individual languages. <laughs> I want to say I want to say 12, but we have a collection in the kids and a collection in adults. Mm -hmm. So there, so there's like two. Spanish collections, for example. And could you say a word about um, work that has been done to uh, diversify the staff? Oh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I want to say, so people who identify, so, so mm -hmm. the town can only rely on, on people who are, are self-identifying yep. as um, from being uh a protected class or from, uh, uh, you know, not white. Um, and so we went from, when, when we started, the baseline was we were, was it 9%? And now we're up to 17%. I, I, I'd have to look, but it, it's over the past five, four years, uh, the, the numbers have improved quite a bit. And, and the numbers that the town, uh, are able to, the town is able to give me, um, they also give me the town's figures. So we can, you know, over time, see how the library is tracking in comparison to, to the town overall, town employees. So we're on, we're definitely on the right track. Um, we work very, very closely with the town's HR department, um, which is very diverse. Uh, they, for the past year, they've, they've been struggling that a couple of uh, staff members have left, but now they're back on board. So I don't want to say effort stalled, but they're because we've been hiring some people, but um, they have a new HR team, uh, as well as the DEI department, uh, which has been in existence for a little over a year now. Um, and we work very closely with them. Um, so, you know, we're we're not at the we're not at the beginning. Um, we have not maxed out. We're, we're somewhere in the middle. We, so here's an interesting anecdote. We the the town has been offering DEI training to each department. So the DEI department is going from police, fire, DPW, library, rec, offering DEI classes kind of to get us all to a, a the same level. And um based on the experience with, with the library training, it was, it was very basic for us. Like we had, we had learned what she was presenting. So, um, which was, I, I felt really great about, um, because we're kind of above, above, I don't know, further along than others. Yeah. And, and so it continues. Right. So I'm going to, Tell me whether this is correct. Staff diversity has improved from 9% to 17%. In 2022, 17, roughly 17% 17 of Jones Library employees self-identify as a protected class or two or more races. And that compares to 14.2% of Amherst employees that identify in the same way. Is that reasonably accurate? It's, it sounds like it, if you're reading from the, the figures, yes. Yes, yeah, I was. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to, you know, again, acknowledge the work that Sharon's been doing to try to make sure that our staff um, is uh, diverse in the ways that it can and should be. Okay, anything else, Tammy, from PPP? 
No, I think that does it. And thank you for approving the evaluation of Sharon. Any other questions for Tammy and PPP? Okay. All right. Next is um, Development Committee. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I just want to echo or reinforce uh, everything that Austin said. Oh, the one thing that Austin didn't say is that he was a fabulous MC. He could have a, a whole second career or third or fourth, whatever. Thank you. Lee. And a, a more cheerful one. Uh, he, you, yeah, you were great. Thank and you. the other thing I want to say, I'm not... Again, I want to reinforce what a pleasure it was to be there. Yeah. With the library being celebrated, yeah. it was in a festive mood. Absolutely. And it was just, it was just great. That's all I want to say about that. All right. So now, <laughs> all right. So, thought I had this. Hmm. Well, I, oh, no, here, here. All right. I thought I had all the figures for the Lisco event, but it appears I don't. But uh, we filled the hall. We had something like 524 confirmed uh, reservations or acceptances or whatever we called them. And we, you know, we deliberately made the event like the library free and open to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and I'm told that it's very unusual for an event to fill Johnson Chapel and, you know, and we did it. Um, we raised just on that night, uh, uh, slightly under $15,000, which includes $2,500 from the wonderful UMass Five College Federal Credit Union. Mm -hmm. But I think this will be a gift that keeps on giving and that other gifts yeah. will come in, whether they get attributed to the Lisco event or yeah. not, yeah. scarcely matters. Uh, and we um, we have over 100 new members of the Friends, which if you've ever worked for a nonprofit, wow. is, you know, to have 100 new members is is excellent. So there's that. Okay, so um, the annual fund going uh, as of this moment continues as it was the last time I reported uh, to be slightly ahead of where we were at this time last year in terms of both the f amount of dollars and the number of gifts. So we have $14,561.61, no matter how much Bob doesn't like how I report the pennies, with 71 <laughs> gifts uh, compared to $13,089.44 with 63 gifts. And again, I would say, partly in relationship to discussions we've had here and in the budget committee, um, Sharon undertook uh, uh, yet another one of her labors uh, to investigate what other libraries in our situation, which is to say libraries who have an annual campaign, annual fund campaign, and who also have been building, doing a capital campaign, but who are a little ahead of us in the project, uh, have discovered. And what she's discovered is what we have discovered is that, it, you know, um, your annual campaign is less robust than you might have hoped as your capital campaign um, takes up a lot of energy. And other libraries have, in fact, suspended their annual fund mm. campaigns, which we have not. And uh, I'm optimistic that, you know, that we will go forward. We will. I think we haven't. I, I think last year's numbers will be achievable. Maybe we'll continue to do better, which would be quite amazing. Um, and so. Uh, and they're my, assuming, as I do, that the renovation and expansion project is going to happen, there'll be less need for some of the act 
activities that the annual fund has usually gone to support. So we can use that to um, backstop what I think will be an explosion of activities once the project is complete. Mm -hmm. And the campaign report, uh, you know, for the month, we took in $42,601. There are several larger contributions or pledges, but we don't report anything until we get it in writing. And so I'm hopeful that by next month, we'll have a few more in writing. And that's my report for the development committee. But we're very, you know, we're very charged up by the success of the event. And we're looking forward to having another splendid event to celebrate both the beginning of the project and the closing of the building. So get your glad rags ordered. Aha! Ah, Farah, I love you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I that think includes that's... you, Austin. I think that's the first time that the phrase glad rags have been used in a trustee meeting in a long time. So it, that's, but I, I thought it might inspire you to sing. <laughs> not, but not, not, not now. Not, not presently. So any questions for the development committee? Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for the work that you're doing. You're welcome. Okay. Next is um, budget, Mr. Pam. Okay. Um, I believe, um, Sharon, did you include the September report? I um, probably not. I sent it separately. The bit, the minutes. Okay. In any case, um, <clears throat> we met yesterday, and. Uh, had discussions about a variety of things. Um, uh, Lee has already told you that that uh, the friends raised fourteen thousand five hundred and change uh, for the annual fund through September thirtieth. Uh, I am hoping and expecting that by the end of the calendar year there will be a major effort to uh, get more money because. We have uh, included in the budget a substantially larger amount than what we have so far. And so uh, in general, the uh, end of year contribution is what <clears throat> makes the big difference in the annual fund. Lee, you had a question? Yeah, I think I think the LISCO money is going to the capital campaign. Yes. And the annual fund is what I'm talking about now, I think. So yes, I'm hoping that there will be a <laughs> letter or so on uh, to raise money. Oh, indeed, indeed. But I thought you said that the fourteen thousand was going to the annual fund. If I misheard you, I'm sorry. He did. He was re referring to the annual fund, which has raised about fourteen thousand dollars. He was not referring to the the Lithgow money. Sorry, similar Bob. amounts but different fund. <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, anyway, we, we continue to need to have annual fund funds in order to keep the budget in balance. Yep. Um, I raised a question at the budget committee meeting about uh, the fact that what we have used is essentially a placekeeper for the second half of the year, basically assuming as that, that the expenses will be the same this year as they have been in the past. But if we end up being in a different building for three months or four months or six months of this year, we will need to have a very different kind of budget, which will reflect the changes that will occur, uh, whether we will have to pay separately for gas and electricity, whether, you know, the costs for, for some of the maintenance expenses will disappear and what other things can be then included. Um, all of these are things that belong in a, a budget document that we can look at uh, for the second half of the year. Um, Sharon's response has been 
that until we know what the terms of, of leases might be during the time that we are away, it's hard to project all of those things. That is true, but we still need to be thinking about it. In addition, <clears throat> just from a, a budgetary perspective, questions of how to maintain services when we are both setting up and in different locations suggested to me that that might be a good idea to think about renting a van and setting it up as a bookmobile or doing other kinds of things which will uh, allow us to to maintain our visibility when people aren't sure where we are uh, a simple thing like uh, some kind of uh, cart or you know the the drop box that we currently have in front of the library in some expanded way or maybe in the same way um, just so that people can go to the location where they've always gone and be able to drop things off or or pick things up at certain hours you know there are a variety of things that we can do which will make um, this uh, period of transition easier for people to deal with. So I'm just thinking about what are the things that we can do, um, which might allow us to maintain services and maintain some continuity uh, while things are somewhat in flux during construction. So those are our questions that I had raised at the time. Um, obviously th there is no clear resolution on any of those. And some of those actually are questions for this full board to think about, but I don't know how, yeah, yeah. when we are planning to do that, so. Yeah, and we'll be working on some of those questions in the Jones Library Building Committee, but I think you're right that this will be a conversation that the whole board will have to have. Okay, um, so that that is where that is. Um, with respect to the other assignment that, that uh, the budget committee has received from the board, which is to think about ways to uh, cover any gap between the amount that must be provided to the town and when that may actually be raised, uh, that obviously would require us to be able to borrow. And um, I've been working on one piece of it, which is simply what a presentation might look like. And we will be going over that uh, in the near future. And the second piece of that is coordinating that with the capital campaign so that when we go someplace, uh, we at least know what the capital campaign people have done in terms of discussions with those same folks. The probable lenders for us in any uh, plan where we borrow would be one of the financial institutions that, that we currently deal with or which are uh, domiciled or have facilities in Amherst. <laughs> so those are the two pieces that, that will determine when we can do this. But it is clear that um, we will need to be doing this very soon because as I understand it, the uh, council will be required to vote on the amount um, that they are essentially guaranteeing to, to the MBLC. Um, that amount is currently set structured at $36 million. Um, and so they will need to do that on an updated number, but they will be doing that perhaps if they do it in the next uh, two and a half months, then it'll be based upon an estimate rather than the actual bid number, which would not come until probably three months or four months from now. Well, I don't know how that will be played out, um, but one way or another, I think we need to have a statement to them in a progress report, which they can at least consider as they vote. Right. May I ask a question, Bob and, and Lee? Um, 
is it possible that one could go to a bank and ask the following, uh, I'm going to call it a hypothetical question. If we were to borrow uh, now, which we're not going to do, if we were to need to borrow now, given our assets collateral, uh, uh, how much would a bank be willing to lend at what rate? Understanding that we're not going to borrow now, but it would give if if a bank mm -hmm. would do that. I don't know that a bank would, but it would give us the trustees um, uh, a sense of what the possibilities are. So I just wonder whether or not you and Lee can think about that possibility of of going to. A, these lending institutions and saying, you understand, we're not going to be borrowing for a while, but if we needed to borrow in dollars, maybe given whatever three scenarios, uh, what would your reaction be? What would the rates be? And what would the terms be? Those are well, yeah. correct. part of what we've been yeah. thinking about. Great. So you can get that information pretty quickly, right? In the sense of um, that if you're asking them as if we were borrowing now, uh, that's information that you could get in the near future. We would hope. <laughs> well, I wonder if you would try. So yes. I'm, I know you are yeah. trying, but I wonder if like, you might try yeah. and see whether we can get that information, let's say, over the next three or four weeks. That would be really helpful. Uh, understanding that it's hypothetical, it's going to be revised. Yeah. That would be great. Okay, any other questions for the Budget Committee? Yeah, Alex. Yeah, I just, I know we're going to be discussing temporary locations and decisions in the building um, committee, the Jones, the town building committee, but I guess, um, I mean, Bob, you threw out a couple of things, and I certainly appreciate the desire to keep services going. Um, I don't know whether you, and I guess we'll have to discuss this as a board. I mean, a lot of the things that you're saying, like I'm thinking about, you know, if you're keeping a book bin here, so that's somebody driving to that book bin multiple times per day. Like, like every suggestion you made is lovely, but every suggestion has an exponential cost attached to it and an exponential strain on staff. And so I guess, um, I guess all those things are going to be discussed. I mean, all those things are going to be discussed and we can decide what we're going to do. But I guess I just want to sort of put out there that I appreciate where you're coming from. But I also want to, since this is the budget piece, want to say that all of these ideas are uh, come come with come with costs. Um, that would be in addition to, you know, renting facilities, et cetera, as well as increasing staff costs. So those are just all things to sort of tuck into our brains as we decide what it looks like that, you know, when when we have ideas that we're making sure we're attaching the cost with those ideas so we can do some sort of cost of value, some some valuation of like where do we get the most bang for our buck depending on what our budget is. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Um Far. Hold on one second, Bob. Yeah, Far. Just to go back to the, you were talking about the bookmobile, Bob. So Sharon, a uh, question was more to you. I know a couple of summers ago, I don't know if it was last summer, didn't we have like bookmobiles going to, um, it was part of the outreach piece of the building committee, but was it just the van that we have that's, or was it another van that went out as a bookmobile? So staff have taken uh, collections to parks uh for example to the schools uh linda does a traveling cart which goes to town cultural events so um as alex once said you can have a bookmobile with actually without actually having the van mm -hmm. um and that's and that's integrated into the whole outreach piece and and um uh yeah so i i 
agree completely with Alex with what you said. All of Bob's and, and those kinds of ideas are awesome. Um, and it's going to start with, you know, finding out where the locations are. Staff will have to, they'll be spending a lot of time figuring out just the logistics of how to get a book from point A to point B, um, as well as patrons returning, all of the work that's going to have to go into the catalog. You know, there are items right now that just says, on the shelf, but some of our items may end up in storage. So they all have to be converted. It's all just a lot of time. And then there's the programming that will have to happen offsite because we're not gonna be paying for interim space for that. And, and there is, staff have begun those relationships beautifully, um, but a lot of those spaces are outside and a lot of the year is is not favorable for outside. So we're gonna have to find some indoor places to do programming. So so all of those things are are balls in the air that the staff uh have to think about. And they're 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 nervous about it. They're not, not nervous, they're anxious about finding out where the interim spaces are gonna be so they can start the planning process because it's gonna be a boatload of work. But thank you. Okay. And um, we're going to spend a lot of time on this interim location question. And I'm going to make a suggestion. Of course, we can continue to talk about it now. But my suggestion is that we actually not continue to talk about it now. That the library director be charged to come up with a plan and make recommendations. And uh, anybody wants to communicate any ideas should do it to the library director. And we'll have a chance to review those recommendations. Uh, Ultimately, what we do about the interim location is going to be decided by the trustees. It's our, it's our decision. Uh, I assume that the library director's plan, the recommend, recommended plan, would be vetted first by buildings and facilities, since this is a building and facility question, um, and then brought forward for discussion as to its budgetary implications, as its personnel implications. But I think we're a little way off from this. And so, Sharon, w w just remind us about when you think you might have um, a plan to recommend to us. Gosh. Uh, so if responses to the RFP are due, let's say, mid-November, I don't have that date in front of me. Um, I, I don't know how long it takes for the town to agree or disagree. What happens if there are no responses is another uh, thing, but let's say something rises to the top beautifully and we're like, oh, that's okay. um, then the staff will, it, it's going to take a good, let's say month uh, to, to start working out those kinds of just the staffing plan alone. You know, we have the two branches in play. We also are very interested in a center of town location. Um, mm -hmm. And right now there's a place at Cottage Street that we would like, and that's separate from the RFP. Uh, so that people can drop books up, uh, drop books off, uh, pick pick up holds. And so just all of these intricacies, um, you know, with our van going back and forth between all of these different locations, all of that needs to be worked out. So I would guess a month to have some kind of, you know, skeleton of an idea, but then it, it, it's going to, it's going to take a while. So at least a month after the date at which interim location has been chosen yeah. and maybe a little longer as you work out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any questions, other budget questions? Bob. Just one quick comment, which is, yes, I'm aware that there are costs that are involved with all of these things. Uh, the word exponential is the in, inexact description of that. That's all. Okay. So how about we talk about investments? Okay. Well. Finished? No. Yeah. Dorothy, I'm not available. Um, the endowment value as of uh, September 30th was $8,201,857. I am rounding pennies. I do not deal with that when you're talking in millions. <laughs> uh, the Woodbury Fund was 663000 uh, 
247. Um, these are both lower numbers than the previous month, uh, but nonetheless, they are um, still within our normal range. It goes up and it goes down, and I'm not particularly worried about that at this moment. Um, we have normally um, had Vanguard come and report to us on the September 30th report, um, usually not in October because it's not available at that point, but in the November meeting, we have moved our November meeting to November 28th. Dan, <clears throat> Dan Voss said that he may or may not be available since his wife is due to give birth on that date or thereabouts, um, third child. So um, we will have a, uh, a substitute come and report to us, but it will, uh, as always, contain a report which will review where we are and what's going on and any recommendations that he might have. Uh, but that is where that is. So um, I have been setting that up and they, they are aware of the new date. Okay, any questions for investment? Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, I, uh, don't, I don't see Lou and, and not sure that we have anything from the friends. Uh, so the next item would be a report of the library director. So, um, yes, so so things are, are, are a bit crazy right now. Um, I, I expect that they'll, you know, start to calm down once we actually have our construction documents done and we're going out to bid. But right now, um, yeah, li life is crazy. And it's so crazy that I didn't even have time to use uh, subjects and verbs in my director's report. It's like, <laughs> it's just a list of stuff that we've been doing. Um, some of the highlights. So the viewpoint filming happened a couple of weeks ago. It was really lovely. The people people were wonderful to work with. Ginny uh, kept everybody, you know, this is what this is what we're doing. And um, and we had so many program participants willing to be in the uh, the recording. So I, I think the the final product is going to be really fabulous. And and whatever doesn't end up in the final product, we'll, we will be able to get um those uh those shots as well the block party i have to give a shout out to all the staff who go along with the friends and table at the block party uh the staff do a lot of tabling uh, between janet and mia and cecilia uh and linda going to all the town's cultural events any uh bid or chamber events the the, the colleges the university uh, it's we have quite the presence out there, and and the friends more and more have they're in it. It's really cool how excited they are to raise funds for the annual fund as well as to be a part of of this building project. And what they just accomplished with the Lithgow event was not insignificant. That's a boatload of work, and they pulled it off spectacularly. Um, so all that's going on. The North Amherst Library Project, we are still waiting for a certificate of occupancy until we get that. I can't have the staff there. Um, so unfortunately, the staff need to know where they're working and, and what their schedule is. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have them working at the Jones um, and we'll just sit back and wait. Guilford was hoping to get the um, the permit last week and it didn't come through. And so just this is all, all this uncertainty is very difficult for staff. So um, I will let you know when, when things get rolling. Um, the New England Library Association Conference this year is in Springfield. So that's so great. We have seven or eight staff that are going. Friends are funding that. It's awesome. Library Journal is has invited me to Texas, um, yay, uh, in November to discuss the library's relationship with the Crest Department. And um, 
this is really exciting. It's uh, really quite groundbreaking, believe it or not, not just the Crest Department, but public libraries um, working with uh, non-police uh, organizations, uh, whether it's a social worker or, or, or something like Crest. So I'll be on a panel of the Crest. Um, I don't, I, she may be the interim director, her name, Kat, Kat Newman, uh, who is lovely. She'll be going with me and we will be on a panel along with some folks from Illinois. Um, anyways, so this November 7th and 8th, I'm really excited about that. I have to leave here this meeting by 545 because there is a candidate forum tonight for town counselors. Um, so I'll be giving a presentation. Just It's just a quick snapshot about what the Jones Library does. That's tonight. The FY23 audit is going on now. Library tours weekly. Um, it, it's fabulous. And it's really fun, again, to see people who you know, okay, Sharon, this is a library, big deal. That's, that's their, you, you see their attitude um, when, you know, when they walk in and they shake my hand, and, but by the middle of the tour, every single time you, you see the light bulb go off and they're like, oh, wow, yes, <laughs> no brainer. So that's, that's very enjoyable. And then the building committee, uh, holy cow. So we've met with Eversource, uh, the fire department, the DPW shade tree committee was last night. They were really lovely. Um, uh, side note, the Feingold Alexander did another rendering for us on their dime from uh, as if you were standing in the CVS lot looking at the building. Um, so to give people a sense of not, not only the massing, but also the straight line of sight that that we'll have. Um, so we, it, yeah, it's fabulous. And when I get it, I will share it with you all. And the designs, we have met with FAA. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on before it gets to the level of the building committee. It's almost daily that I meet with them along with George. We've met with them over acoustics, you know, where to put the ceiling tiles, uh, the ugly ceiling tiles, um, uh, security, uh, you know, the IT and, and AV and security equipment, uh, signage, that is going to be a big deal, uh, uh, starting with the staff. Um, and we're talking about, so there's, you know, major signage, like the John Lithgow Children's Center, a person can dream, you know, the children's <laughs> room, um, down to, uh, you know, here are some bookcases that that people have, have donated to. So the uh, signage everywhere. Um, fire suppression, that's really important between the special collections, storage space, as well as the, the Civil War tablets room. Um, the artwork, we met with the architects today over where to put our art. You know, we have a certain number of very large pieces that have to be on display because they have been preserved by CPA funds. So finding just the right spots. Um, and as a prime example, the uh, unnamed nobleman, um, which historically has had a very prominent space in the library, no longer does, but it has to be in the library because the frame was preserved using CPA funds. But so we'll be finding a place for it on mm. on on a load bearing wall because it's a really big, heavy thing. Yep. Uh, but it's not going to be the first thing people see when they come into the library. Um, lots of discussion about the landscaping. We met with the RFID um, company. Uh, over, you know, placement of the uh, the conveyor belt and, and tagging and things like that. We talked already about the interim spaces and the staff planning that goes into it. Um, and again, thank you. Be, be, be kind is my note. Be kind to the staff because um, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of work. And, and I just I appreciate you letting the staff um uh, take the lead on it and then and then bring you their right. plan that all leads up to so my evaluation I just have to thank you all you and the staff and and the friends so every year when it comes time to do this you know I go through I keep a journal uh, of all the things that I've done the the good and the bad and um I don't use a lot of uh, verbs in in my journal either it's you know a lot of subject headings 
And, and so I list all, okay, this is the stuff we did. And because of the building project, you all and I, we're in this together. So like, there's nothing that I'm doing that you guys don't know about. Um, our committee, our committee uh, structure is actually quite brilliant. It just works so well. It's also fun for me because I'm old and 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 because I've been here a long time. I just celebrated my 12th anniversary. And on the one hand, it feels like 12 years. On the other hand, it really doesn't. It has gone by very quickly because of the building project. And it's been a lot of a lot of great stuff. And again, going back to the staff, I could not be doing, contributing, spending this much time on the building project if it weren't for the A number one staff. They're running the place. They are providing excellent customer service. They are answering the questions. They're working with police, fire, DPW on all sorts of things. They're working with the schools and the chamber and rec. They are amazing. And that's why I am able to do what I do because of them. The friends, again, remember when, hey, Austin, you and I were here 12 years ago. And back then, the friends and the trustees didn't talk to each other. But now they're so great. The relationship is fabulous. And they are just, they're, they're just working so hard. And I really enjoy watching them get into it. Um, right. And then you guys, uh, yeah, so it makes me very emotional. I love you all. And um, it even with all the hard stuff, this is the best job I've ever had. And I'm truly blessed and thank you for your time. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks for that report. Any questions for the library director? Farah, did you have a question? Not a question, just a comment. I just want to say, Sharon, I just love your enthusiasm mm. and and your sense of calm in the face of not so calm moments in the last few years. So thank you for the amazing job and to, to the amazing staff. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the library director? I don't have a Tammy. question. I just want to reiterate a big thank you to Sharon. Um, I love that the public comment person said, thank you, Sharon. And um, I reiterate that from the bottom of my heart. Um, we so appreciate you and your, the cheerfulness and the enthusiasm, which helps all of us do our, our work um, more happily. <laughs> Okay, other comments or questions? Okay, so um, we next uh, meet on November 28th at five o'clock on Zoom. And uh, I wish you all well, stay well, and this meeting is adjourned.